Hi, my name is Flavia and my research focuses on the in vivo characterization and evaluation of 3D printed scaffolds applied to the reconstruction of large segmental bone defects in preclinical large animal models. This area of study holds huge potential for advancing regenerative medicine, eventually helping patients with complex bone reconstruction needs. I think Flavia and Dietmar, they know exactly where translation comes from. Translation comes from a clinical need. You know, it's really, where do we have our challenges? And when we're talking about large down bone defects, it's actually to overcome it. Yes, we have some surgical solutions, but sometimes there are multiple surgeries required to overcome the challenge of a bone down defect. Now, in the future, we may have solutions which is a one-stop shop. And this is where I think the developments in the research at Flavia and Dietmar are progressing may lead us to. Large bone defects resulting from trauma, tumor, resection or disease, they represent a significant clinical challenge. In 2019, Australia reported 1.6 million fractures needing clinical intervention. While the current uh, gold standard treatment relies on autologous bone graft, which is harvested from the patient's own body, their limited availability and donor site morbidity present limitations. Over the past two decades, our research group has dedicated extensive efforts to investigating the diverse scaffold-guided bone tissue engineering concepts, employing our well-established ship animal model as a preclinical tool to assess bone tissue reconstruction. My name is Michael Vargles, I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon. One of the big problems in reconstructive surgery is managing large defects of bone. By definition, they're bone defects that don't heal by themselves and they're depressingly common in the field in which I work. Uh, one of the ways we've come up with overcoming that challenge is to use 3D printing technology and some fancy reconstructive surgery techniques to bring uh, implants to life in human beings. And this is on the back of a long period of basic science research in animal models. Um, but uh, whilst we've shown that this particular technique works and works well in a range of different anatomical locations, one of the challenges now is to understand what are the processes that drive the formation of regenerate tissue in our 3D printed bioabsorbable scaffolds. And obviously the key to unlocking those secrets is to look at histological samples of these tissues. So we've been very privileged to have the services of Flavia to help us look at some of what's happening on a cellular level inside regenerate tissue. How the preclinical work in which you have been instrumental in establishing this histochemical and immunohistochemical protocols to support the clinical trials with our preclinical work, how this is tying in and vice versa when you got biopsies from Michael's patient, how you analyze those. To help understand the mechanisms behind the scaffold-guided bone regeneration, we use uh, preclinical large animal models and through histology and um, immunohistochemistry, we evaluate bone regeneration through the period of uh, healing. Many groups in the world think about very short term, that the regeneration happens in weeks. Yeah. But we have proven that this large defect take up to years. Yeah, usually our studies take time point of six months or 12 months to evaluate bone regeneration through the scaffold guided bone regeneration. And then we use the histology, which is a very time consuming uh, work. It takes a lot of time to optimize and uh, get the right antibodies to work to evaluate this bone uh, response. A number of biopsy samples, right? Michael was able to harvest on the patient, which is also very unique. Not many groups in yeah. the world are able to do this type of research to get actually samples of patients back after two, three or four years. 
This is not very common, but when Michael has the chance to bring us the biopsy, we also evaluate these uh, human biopsies through uh, immunohistochemistry and um, histology as well. We also use uh, scanning electron microscopy to evaluate the um, bone cells and what is happening there with the scaffold and the new tissue that is built. Yeah. Well, one of the other key things yeah. is like there's the cellularity aspect and of course as a plastic surgeon we worry about vascularity an awful That's lot and one of the really amazing things that you were able to show us particularly with the scanning electron um, micrographs was the presence of a vascular network which was very precious and amazing to someone like me to see that yeah. there is actually a blood supply there. That's yeah. cool. Right? Which gives you confidence Absolutely. that's a bone which is actually most people get wrong is not a tissue is an organ yeah. is functional. Our research has been essential in establishing a preclinical large animal model for the assessment of critical load-bearing bone defect reconstruction, which has been published in the Nature Protocols Journal, marking a significant contribution to the scientific community. Our protocol's significance extends even further with the application of the regenerative matching axial vascularization approach, which has played a fundamental part in yet another two publications. We have achieved remarkable progress with the successful implementation of this approach in the world first patient case, where we achieved the successful reconstruction of the largest segmental bone defect using a 3D printed scaffold. This landmark achievement has opened new possibilities for patients with large bone defects, offering them hope and for improved outcomes and a better quality of life. As we continue our research endeavors, we strive to further refine and optimize our methods, ultimately contributing to the advancement of regenerative medicine.